there's three belt cars. And this would be empty. Mm-hmm. Okay, that was quite a workout. Much more difficult than going up the Great Pyramid. We're on top of Domans, which is in just outside of Florianopolis. And uh, yesterday we discovered that there was Orion formation of three megalithic sites. Not a lot's known. This is the one that's been most studied. Uh, but I talked to uh, my friend Luis Fernando yesterday and um, he told me that there are three megalithic sites that he wanted to take me to. And, and I hadn't heard about any megalithic sites here in Florianopolis. Uh, in fact, they don't even have names except for this one. But <clears throat> basically when he told me that there was uh, three, I said, are they arranged in a triangle? And he said, no, more like a straight line, but not really straight. And I said, it's Orion's belt. And we just have to confirm it now. And sure enough, <clears throat> it was. We confirmed it last night. The distant, uh, you can see the top of the hill over there that comes off like this. And then you can see something at the top where there are stones at the top. That is, maybe you can bring a little bit right to where the center is my finger. Um, that is the first. The second one they call is it the head of the dragon. That's called the head of the dragon. Okay. So that's the head of the dragon. And what are the other names for these then? Even though they're not official names, but yeah, these are like the yeah, indigenous people named it? The... No, more, more, more local. More okay. Local. They call that the head of the dragon. So this is like a dragon coming down in their mind? Yeah. Or they see a head of the dragon laid in that like mountain. Down. Yes. Yeah, I see it. Yeah. I see it too. You can yeah. kind of see it on its side. Yes. And its nostril is over there. It yeah. does look like a dragon. Yeah. And then. The one down there, which is where all those rocks are, that's where we were yesterday. Yeah. That's the center. Yeah. And then the distance. Uh, they call the Indian, Indian stone. The middle. Indian stone, okay. And then the distance is exactly matching Orion's belt. Now, we came to Domans this morning, talked to the, the woman that works for the archaeologist who, what's her name? Deborah. Deborah. And she showed us a book that <clears throat> they'd already discovered that here on Domans is a another relationship to Orion. Now, these sites are all matching up with both winter and summer solstice. And it's kind of like Bra Brazil's Stonehenge, you could say. But it's like a cross between Stonehenge and Clavacil in, uh, in Scotland, which is also three mounds in the shape of, of Orion's belt, which happens to be right adjacent to the Grant family properties. <laughs> In, uh, in Scotland, in a place called Grant Town on Spey, next to Inverness. But basically, we came up here and she had told us that this particular site was representing Orion. Now, this is at the highest elevation. I analyzed it based on, if we organize this according to the size of the Great Pyramid and the angles, right? So which one would be the Great Pyramid? And this would either be Mintaka or Altinak. Those are the two that it could be. Uh, that would be the stars. So I believe that's actually the Great Pyramid. I could be wrong. We have to confirm it. And that this would be Khafre Pyramid, the small one. And that this one would be Menkare, which seems opposite. Now, why would that be the case? Why are we standing at this high elevation when the Great Pyramid is the tallest? Well, the Menkare Pyramid represents something that is beyond this earth. We discovered last year inside the Menkare Pyramid the Garden of Eden scene, as described in the Bible, uh, a tree of life, several trees of life with the staff of Hermes and flaming sword, as well as uh, two snakes wrapped around it and many serpents throughout that room. Also depictions of tree of knowledge of good and evil, where it has like cat's eyes, seductive feline cat's eyes, trying to seduce you to take the fruit of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. I believe that uh, what it represents is mankind on this hero's journey that is actually Orion, transcending beyond duality and choosing love instead of choosing judgment. We all believe that we come here to learn more judgment. I can tell you right now, for 54 years living on this planet, judgment hasn't gotten me very far. And sure, you might say, well, it kept you from getting killed or whatever. Maybe so. But I can tell you that in human relationships and what it means to be a human being, judgment doesn't get you anywhere. It only brings you suffering. Judgment is the seed of all suffering. 
So as we start to transcend this idea of, of being here to learn better judgment and to make judgments and to get rid of the things we don't like about ourselves, all that reflects in the world around us is more things we don't like about ourselves. In fact, the exact same things we don't like about ourselves. If you still judge war, then you're going to end up with wars all over the place, in your field, in your space. So this is now something that we have to do. It doesn't mean that you condone it. It doesn't mean that you, you just say, oh, it's fine. It's not a big deal. And it doesn't mean you don't feel empathy. If you think that living in a simulation means that you don't have to have feelings for anything, you've missed the point altogether because the entire reason we're here is to learn how to feel, to learn how to love and to learn how to be loved. That's the purpose. We are the one dividing itself into the many so that it can learn the process of transcendence beyond duality and move into the love dimension. That's where we are in the next stage. There'll be more challenges still for us, but Orion just represents humanity as a whole and where we are in our journey, moving from a conquering hunter into a sage, a wise person who's able to balance his masculine and feminine aspects, which is exactly appropriate why we're finding this and discovering this the day before the eclipse, which represents the divine masculine, divine feminine merging into one. We're the only planet in the solar system that has a perfect solar eclipse. And the reason that's even possible is because the sun is 400 times larger in diameter than the moon. And it is likewise 400 times farther from Earth than the moon is. This makes it possible for us to have a perfect solar eclipse where no other planet in the solar system does. And we think about the chances of that happening are so tiny from a mathematical probability perspective but the beauty that comes out of this solar eclipse is the corona that forms around the outside, the ring of fire, the ring representing the ring of the alchemical marriage, but also representing the crown that's now basically being placed on the head of the divine union. When both masculine and feminine can live to work together and start to understand that we don't need to completely comprehend each other. We simply need to love and accept each other because the biggest aspect of learning enlightenment and earning enlightenment, there's learned wisdom and there's earned wisdom. Experiential learning is earned wisdom. That's why we're here. Learning enlightenment is really about learning to choose to express love to a degree that supersedes and exceeds your desire for one objective truth or for a collection of what you believe to be objective truths because you've now realized that the only real objective truth is the love, the reason that underlies all of it. We often find ourselves wanting to be right. It's time to choose love instead of choosing to be right. As we look at this particular site, we can see these three stones right here, also oriented exactly in the way of the top three stones of Orion. So these three stones would represent Betelgeist, Mesa, and Bellatrix, the top three stars of Orion. Then the stone that I'm on right here is the center stone. So this would be representing Altinak, and the far stone would be Mintaka. And then this stone, where the altar place is, would, would be the center stone of, the, uh, of Orion's belt. Then you've got two very large stones back here. And those two very large stones would represent the uh, regal, right? The other, and I'm forgetting the name of the other star at the base of, uh, of Orion right now. Safe, safe, that's right, safe. It's interesting that it has the same sound as safe. It's S-A-I-P-H. So we've got Orion right here. Now, what are the chances for a synchronicity like this? No one that invited me here to Brazil knew that any relationship did you guys know this no, no. we had an idea <laughs> heard a little bit of it before but didn't go like in, in your country yeah so you didn't think about the relationship to orion for this place or no i've heard a few years ago mm -hmm. but i didn't correlate when when you're coming with with this and i forgot about the orion totally and yep. that the archaeologists just said i just knew when i was picking you up in the airport that there was something here that would uh, come up, come up. And, but I totally didn't know about Orion or anything. I didn't, no one, of, no one of, of us knew anything. We just prepared a workshop and, yeah. and people were asking, why were you here before the, 
the eclipse and not in these states, right? Yes, because this is exactly where I'm supposed to be. This is a sacred place. It's a portal. Everywhere in the world where Orion uh, configurations exist are time-space portals. And we could find them, whether it's in China, in Xi'an, or in Giza, on the Giza Plateau, the Great Pyramid Complex, or in Teotihuacan, Mexico, or in Clavacairn, Scotland, right? Or here in Brazil. And there are probably many other places and they're all connected, right? Maybe they're portal stations that you can actually go between each of these places as well by knowing the right frequencies. We know from our latest work that the King's Chamber appears to be a planetarium or stargate. I actually believe it's a spiritual ascension stargate that it teaches you how to remember who you are to be able to access all the constellations and star systems that exist within the walls of the Great Pyramid. And this is now starting to gain real traction. The Scan Pyramid Project is, is uh, reached out to me last week. I have a call with them. It's now getting a lot of attention from all the podcasts we've been doing and millions of views on it. And I think what's gonna happen is we're gonna start to realize that we don't even need spaceships. <laughs> it's already built in to our planet, the whole thing. And that we'll be able to have access eventually. If you look at the King's Chamber, each of the constellations that are on the walls, you have the North Wall has Taurus, which is represented also by Orion. Orion's a Taurus, the great bull of the West. Then you have on the West Wall, a giant lion. You have on the East Wall, the face of a man. And then on the South Wall, you have a scorpion, mm -hmm. right? And also an eagle. The four faces that were on the Ark of the Covenant were those exact four faces, the man, right, for Aquarius, the ox or the bull for, uh, for Taurus and Orion, uh, as well as, because the great bull of the West, as well as the lion and the eagle, which was the ancient symbol for Scorpio, because Scorpio goes through a redemption process, which is what humanity is doing right now too. The redemption is we start with the scorpion that's at the base of the world. It's at the feet of Ophiuchus. Right, so sting, the scorpion stings the foot of Orion, even though in the constellations they're exactly opposite from each other. One's on the south wall, the other's on the north wall. The story is that Orion has his foot stung by a scorpion. Now, a lot of people don't know, but scorpion venom is the most expensive liquid on planet Earth. It sells for $39 million for one gallon. $39 million for one gallon. And what's it used for? Well, in Afghanistan, they use it as a psychedelic. It's a very powerful psychedelic that takes you to the brink of death. But in the process, just like if you do Bufo or one of these other types of psychedelics that are very strong natural toxins, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. So effectively, what they do for this, I think in an ancient rite, and this, this drug is still used very commonly today in Afghanistan, and many, it's becoming more and more popular, is it takes you to an ego death. Mm. So in the story of Orion, he's killed by the scorpion. Now there's many ways that Orion's killed because it's actually representing the many lifetime incarnations of Orion and how he died in all these different ways. One of the ways he died was being killed by an arrow shot by Artemis, his lover. When her brother basically got her to fire the arrow, to see if she was really that good of an archer and she didn't realize it was Orion swimming in the ocean and she killed her love. The other way was a scorpion bit the foot of Orion and Orion died. But then by the help of Asclepius, he came back to life. Well, actually Asclepius is Ophiuchus and Asclepius has the staff or the rod of Asclepius and he sits, he's known as the sitting god. The story wasn't really about Ophiuchus versus Orion, they're the same person. Ophiuchus is the shadow of Orion. And just like with every constellation in the zodiac, you always have one form and then its opposite sign, 180 degrees away from it, is its shadow. So the shadow of Orion is Ophiuchus and the shadow of Ophiuchus is Orion. So this is what shows the transformation because right at the feet of Ophiuchus is the scorpion. The scorpion stung the foot brought the ego death, they allowed them to merge together, the conscious and the unconscious. And then they were, when they merge together, then the result is Orion finds his kinghood and kingdom 
And in our age today, this is a metaphor for all of humanity. We don't need to have a leader anymore. 